what, what the mate is talking about. Yeah. What's up, family? According to reports, from May 29th to May 30th, seven people were murdered in Chicago. On May 31st alone, 18 people were murdered. Combine those three days and you now have the deadliest weekend in Chicago's history in 60 years. The coroners, the police, city officials, they say they don't know what's going on. They don't know how to deal with this. They're absolutely baffled. This, of course, is happening in the backdrop of protest for the murder of George Floyd, who was publicly executed by police officers in Minneapolis on Memorial Day. Chicago, Chicago, Chicago. It seems like, it seems like you're picking on Chicago, like, because we know murders happen everywhere else, all over America. It's bad. Any cities all over America, murders. But here's the thing. When you think about these murders, a great deal of them does happen in the black community, but other people are murdering too, right? So how come we only think about the black people who murder? You know, like, I want to see some of those dead bodies on the ground of other ethnicities. Not that I'm saying because I just want to see people dead. I just want to see the proof because I know it's out there. I know that other people are killing each other. But every time I see the news, it's always the black person laying on the ground. And we know that other ethnicities kill each other. Now, blacks and Hispanics, they, uh, they lay people down in the street. White folks, they oftentimes lay people down while they're at home or they catch you in your garage, coming out of the garage, you know, go to your job, execute you. You know, the thing is, white folks do the same thing black folks do. Pay attention, fam. White folks barbecue in their yard. Black folks barbecue in the front yard. White folks barbecue in the backyard. White folks sell dope. Black folks oftentimes sell dope out of a trap house and people are coming in and out all day long. The block is hot. All they stand out on the street corner and sell dope. White folks sell dope. Not all, but most time. They sell dope in one place, they got one person coming to their house, picking up the load, and they take off and they don't see them again for another couple of days or a week or whatever. And they keep a very, very low profile. White people steal from the job. A uh, black person, not all, but oftentimes, they may get somebody to rob the convenience store that they work at, and they get a few thousand dollars. Whereas a white person is a manager and they embezzle a few hundred thousand or millions. Watch American Greed. I ain't lying. White folks, they uh, participate in domestic abuse all the time. The thing is, unless it's like really, really severe, they seldom call the police. Uh, police officers, they love beating on their women. They got a very, their rate of beating on women is way higher than the, than, than the national average. Uh, when it comes to the white guys that beat on women, they beat on their women behind closed doors. Black guys, they might go behind closed doors, but they ain't got no problem doing it right on the street. Not saying that it's right. I'm just saying, do the same thing. 
It's just you do it a different way. That's all I'm saying. But I would like to see some some evidence that it's not just black people out here killing each other. That is a problem. I'm not trying to make excuses or nothing. Don't get me wrong. I mean, like, I think it's horrible. Like, even if Chicago had, you know, one murder a weekend, you know, think about that person's family, how they feel. That one, that's, that's one murder too many. And it's just hard to understand how we cannot figure out how to snap out of that trance. It's like we are quick to squeeze that trigger on one another. But the moment that the Mexicans was talking about a war, they went out there and squashed it real fast. Now, why we can't squash our own beefs that fast? Why is it not that important? Now, of course, I don't live in Chicago, but I got a lot of homies that live out there, and I've had the same conversation with them. I've been to Chicago many, many times. Chicago is one of my favorite places, even with all of the madness that goes on there. Some of my good buddies are from Chicago. But, and just like I got good buddies from LA, but they can't shake that gang culture. And it's always, you hit us, we hit you. You hit us, we hit you. We hit, you hit us, we hit you. You know, I can only say so much about the culture, but I can speak all day long on black love and black hate. I can speak on that all day long because I'm a black man. And we ain't gonna never get it right till we get it right with self first. Now, that don't mean we're giving the police a pass or we're giving anybody else a pass to get on our ass because we got enough problems. So we don't need anybody else trying to bully us too. But we do have to deal with the bullies in our own communities because we got a lot of them. There are a lot of cats that live in the hood that actually gets off on black people being afraid of them. So they're no different than the police. They're no different than any white supremacist because they have the same type of mindset and that is to instill terror within the black community. They got to go, straight up. I would love to see the men step up. I know that there are men stepping up in Chicago, but it takes a whole lot more than one or two cats on the block to fix it. But somebody got to get it started. Somebody got to do it. Now, and, and here's the strange thing, because I talked to one of my homies, and he was like, man, you know, the police, man, as soon as we try to get it right, police intervene. And they create the madness. They create the chaos. And then you end up going right back to the same old thing. The police see peace. The police do not want peace in the streets. They don't want that. Because if there's peace in the streets, they can't roll on the people in the community. They can't just go and harass people. They're not going to be able to just go and rob drug dealers. They're not going to be able to come down the block and just beat people up and talk bad to their mamas and grandmothers and, and, and beat up their little brothers and their sons. They're not going to be able to put their daughters in the cars and rape them and fondle them. They're not going to be able to do all that stuff because once the people gain pride and take over the community, they take the community back, not just from the thugs and you know the, the, the common thugs, the street thugs. When they take the hood back from the gangbangers and the killers, and the, the dealers, the prostitutes, the pimps, when they take it back, then they got to take it back from the police too. But when they start trying to take it back, the police going to try to run interference because the police, man, they, does not, they do not want that unity. They don't want the hood cleaned up. What they're going to do is when they see you trying to work it out, they run interference and... As they're running interference, they're telling everybody else, see, look what they do. Look how they did. Look what they did. Look what they did. Look at them. Look at them. This is how they act. Look at them. They're killing. They're killing. They're killing. So the average person that don't know what's going on, they don't know that the police got their hands in all this mess. 
So they believe anything the police say because they, see, they just see murder and mayhem. And they say, yeah, you know, the police is out there just trying to help. And the police say, look, we, we, you know, we need help. We need more officers. They've been saying they need more officers for decades. And they still got the issues. Why is that? because the communities are underserved first and foremost. The politicians are playing games. They're diverting funds from the schools, from the, from the schools that need them the most to schools that has more money than they'll ever need. Everybody got their hands in the pot that the community is supposed to eat out of. And the police, they're not gonna be able to eat if the people are on the same page. It's a hell of a fight, man, because the police is hard to beat. But they can be defeated. But you gotta be focused. And you gotta be willing to go all out. You gotta be willing to sacrifice. You gotta be willing to be harassed. You gotta be willing to you know, get locked up. You gotta be willing to go all out. Yeah, I know what I'm talking about. Fellas, and I know a lot of cats from Chicago, check me out. Each one reach one, teach one. Be the change you want to see. We got to do better. No more talk. What the ladies talking about? Yeah.